Hi guys, I'm coming to you from some little micro park and playground not too far from where I live. Um, I want to talk to you about the World of Warcraft information model, but I want to do it in a very particular way. I want to do it in a way that not only illustrates you know, this idea of information types and attributes and value patterns and all that kind of stuff, the way we've been talking about information models, but I want to go the next step at the same time and talk about pulling information out of that information model using a query of the type that we've discussed before, the select from where kind of thing, and then getting it into the user interface. So I want to go all the way from what's the abstract, what's the kind of bubble diagram model of how the information in World of Warcraft might work, and I'll, I'll also add at this point that this is not literally how the information in World of Warcraft works, but it's close enough for what we need to do. And what we need to do is understand how do they store their information, what kinds of information do they have, how are those information types related, and in the end, how do they result in something coming out on the screen that approximates this graphical, rich user experience of World of Warcraft. Okay, so that's where we're going. So I'll start with this pretty big and maybe a little bit imposing overall information model. And it's not even an overall information model, it's really just a small part of an information model, but it covers a lot of the things that we've already talked about in terms of the functionality of World of Warcraft. So take a look at this picture and tell me, what's in the middle? What's smack in the middle of everything else? Where it's, where's the center of action? And when I look at an information model, that's really the first thing that I do, is I try to look for that center of activity. And hopefully you can see that the center of activity is in the class. Now, something else to notice about this diagram here is that I don't have a lot of the attributes listed here, right? This is really only the information types and what? That's right, the information types and how they're related to each other. So we have faction information type, race information type, class information type, role information type, user information type, character information type, and then this whole glob of information types over on the side. And I'll talk about those in just a second. But in the big view, first thing I see is, ah, class is in the middle of action. Class is actually the big deal. And I didn't know that when I started modeling World of Warcraft. I had no idea, actually, what would be the big deal. I've revealed this by trying to map out all the different relationships between things in World of Warcraft. Okay, and then the classes kind of in the middle of a lot of these other information types. Now let's take a look specifically at how these things are related. And now I used to, when I gave you diagrams about how things are related, I used to give you sort of adjectives like it's a member of or belongs to or has, has or something like that. In this case, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to focus mostly on how many relationships they're allowed to be. So let's look at each of these relationships in turn and we'll talk about the how many thing and what it means. So first of all, class, if I slide up to the right, up and to the right, I see classes related to role and classes can play one or more roles. Okay, so I still have that idea. I guess it's not an adjective. It's more like play to play. It's more like a verb. So the class can play a role, but the class can play more than one, one or more roles. So there's not a direct one-to-one -one relationship between class and role. There's what's called a one-to-many relationship. One class can play many roles. Okay, got the idea? Now, a role, let's not even worry for the moment what a role is. Later on, you'll, you'll see more, if you don't know already, you'll see more about what these things mean in terms of World of Warcraft. But right now, let's just look at it as kinds of information. There's a kind of information called role. There's a kind of information called class. And they're related by this relationship. A class can play one or more roles. Okay, a class belongs to one or more races. So a class can belong to a single race or a class can actually belong to more than one race. And furthermore, a race belongs to one faction. So here's a quick question for you. How many factions then can a class belong to? One or more than one? I think the answer is more than one. If I have two classes and they belong to two different factions, excuse me, two races, each race belongs to a different faction, but the class belongs to both of those races, then in effect, the class belongs to one more or more factions. Okay, so faction, role and faction, race, and class define sort of a hierarchy. At the top, I have the faction. Under my factions, you can see race, 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 race. Under race, I can see class, 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 class. Right, so each class belongs to one or more races. Each race belongs to one class. Can you see how if you go up those levels, that's kind of like a little hierarchy? And that, in fact, is how the, as how the characters, the, well, let's not call them the characters, how the figures, you know, the players inside of World of Warcraft are represented. When you start, you, be, you join a faction. That faction has various races. And then within each of those races, you choose which class you want your character to be. 
Okay, so now I'm going to slide down from class to character, and we know that a character belongs to one class. The class belongs to some number of races. Each race belongs to one faction. So my character belongs to a class which is part of a race, uh, one or more races and one or more factions. Now, in fact, when I define the character, I don't get to choose multiple races, right? We'll talk about that later. When I choose a character, it only gets to be part of one class and that class and one race and one faction. So of the many possibilities, when I actually create a character, I have to choose which of those races it's going to belong to and that in turn sets which faction. And in fact, the way I do it in the user interface is exactly the opposite. Choose your faction, choose your race, then choose your class, and that defines your character. But not entirely defines your character. There's lots of other stuff that the character has as well. Okay, so back to the big picture. Class is in the middle. A class plays a certain role. We did actually talk about those roles earlier. It's the role of the tank or the healer or the damage dealer, right? Those are the different roles that a class can play in battle. They'll play the, they'll play the healer, they'll play the damage dealer, or they'll play the tank. Um, and that class belongs to a race, and the race belongs to a faction. Okay, now let's, uh, oh, and sorry, so dealing, scooting off the character here, the character belongs to one class, and a user, that's you, the player, the person who pays for World of Warcraft, has one or more characters. You mount one or more characters, each character belongs to a class, which belongs to a race, which belongs to a faction. Okay, get the idea? That's the setup of the character. So between you and the character, this whole upper part here is the main event. Now let's deal with this whole glob of things down here. And I don't, by any means, want to go into any real detail about any of these things. We'll see some of them pop up later, but in general, let's just call them all the qualities of a class, all the things that define what's different about a class. And if you were a World of Warcraft aficionado, somebody who plays all the time, you'd be all over like, well, what kind of armor does this class have? What kind of weapons does this class have? What are the abilities? Are those abilities better than a different class's abilities? And you'd spend a lot of time learning a tremendous amount about all of these things. For us, we're going to suffice it to say that a class has many different abilities, specializations, items, proficiencies, blah, 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 blah. They're all the, they're all the intricacies of World of Warcraft. But one thing you can see from this diagram is where the major learning curve is. This is beyond the doubt where the major learning curve is, is in this whole glob of things down here. Because not only are they, or is there a lot of them, but each one is very specific, has a lot of different parts, like lots of different abilities. You're going to have to spend a long time learning the abilities. And that's, to a large extent, what it means to be someone who's really into World of Warcraft, is you know a lot about all of these things. It doesn't take so long to learn about facts, factions and races and classes, because there's not that many of them, but it does take a long time to learn about all these other things, all of these other qualities of the class. Now, a, a point that I'll make er uh, again later, which I'll, I'll start with now, is that when I choose a class, Remember, I had to nail down what race that class is going to belong to. Uh, what I choose, sorry, when I create a character, I say what class it's part of, and it can only be part of one race which belongs to one single faction. So I have to nail a lot of things down. Same exact thing happens with, um, with all of this glob of things on the bottom here, all of these different qualities of the class. As I play my character, the specifics of these things are going to be a big part. And in fact, in general, what I'm going to do over time is I'm going to get more and more, better and better. I'm going to up the ante. I'm going to do better and better on all of these things. I'm going to become more specialized. I'm going to get more abilities. My proficiencies are going to increase. I'll collect lots of items. I'll get the better weapons and armor, etc., etc. And that's a way that the game progresses. So remember something I said earlier was that you can think of any application as simply the means to fill out your information model. And in fact, look at this diagram and you will see exactly what's going on in World of Warcraft. When I get started, I choose all of these top things. I choose the role, the class, the race, the faction, etc. by creating a character. My character is created, now what do I do? Now what I do is I fill out all of these, all of these um, qualities as I go through time. And it takes a long time to fill these out. That's where the complexity of the game is, is in how do I exactly get the abilities that I want that will allow me later to collect certain weapons, for example, or, or collect certain armor. How am I going to trade for the items that I need in order to advance in the game? Advancement really is all about these, um, all about these, uh, these qualities, as I've called them, this whole glob of things. That's where the complexity is. Okay, that's the WoW information model sort of from a very high view. Now let's dive in a little bit. Let's start with a focus on classes. So the class itself. And now what I've done is I've zoomed in from that big diagram just to one of the information types called class. 
and now I've given you some of the attributes of that class. Not all of them to be sure, but some of them at least. And notice I have the little etc. box that lets you know that there's a bunch of ones that I'm not talking about. I'm just going to talk about enough to show you the next step that's coming up, which is how these are all displayed in some user interface. Okay, so a class has a class ID. So I'm going to, even if uh, an ID is never seen, you never actually detect it when you look at the application inside of its user interface, I'm always going to say that every information type has an ID. And the reason for that is because if I'm ever going to get to this particular class, in this case it's the hunter, if I'm ever going to get to that hunter, I'm not going to use the name hunter, I'm going to use the class ID, which is class 123. Another quick note about the class is notice the structure of the ID. It's a number, but it's preceded by the, um, the name of the kind of thing that it is. So class one, two, three, later on we'll see role, later on we'll see proficiency. All of these things are, um, uh, are sorry, not proficiency, ability. Uh, these IDs are structured in a way that they're sequential numbers, but they're preceded by a prefix that lets you know what kind of ID it is. If you remember, I said one other time that if I'm in a database and I have an ID 1, I have it in table A, I also have an ID 1 in table 2, I can't really tell necessarily from outside whether I'm talking about table 1 or table 2 just by, by having the ID. So in this case I'm preceding it by a prefix, the word class in this case, and that's going to help me distinguish this kind of ID from all the other kinds of IDs that I have. Okay, so what else does a class have? It has a picture, right? The, the, this hunter class has a picture of a hunter. And some nice illustration of, of the hunter character. It has a name, obviously, and in this case, the name of the class is hunter. We're talking about the hunter class. Lots of different classes with lots of different names. In this case, it's the hunter class. And it has a description that's uh, you know, a few paragraphs full of stuff. And you can see this detailed here in the value pattern chart that I have here, which should be starting to seem familiar to you right now. What we're doing here is we're taking a lot of the information that we've studied before and we're applying it to World of Warcraft to dive in, to get into the guts of World of Warcraft and say, really, how does this thing work? Okay, so class IDs, as I said before, the word class plus a sequential number. The class name, I'm going to limit to a single word. The image, I'm going to make a file name. In this case, the file name is PICT, picked, picture, dot JPG. And then the class description is multiple paragraphs, okay? Pretty straightforward. This diagram is way more straightforward than the first one that we did, way less complicated and should be almost immediately understandable to you. And if it isn't at this point, then you should start going back and looking over stuff because this is a diagram that's the simplest one we're going to look at throughout the rest of this lecture. Okay, now we're going to apply this diagram. We're going to make believe that instead of this diagram here with bubbles, that we actually have a database and class is no longer called an information item, it's called a table. And these attributes are no longer called attributes, they're called columns. So I have a table that has columns. The class table contains all my class items, all of my different classes. And what makes it, as we, as we said before, each row of that table is a different information item. I have the hunter item and I have a bunch of other items that are for the other classes. Okay, so now let's go through a query the results that that query returns, and then directly into the user interface to show how, that, how those results are displayed. Now the user interface I have here is not actually the end user, it's not the world experience um, from World of Warcraft, it's actually part of their help system. But interestingly, I can use exactly the same data from uh, the World of Warcraft database to create web pages that have descriptions of characters as I can to create the actual user interface that you use to play the game. Okay, so let's go, backwards from, let's go backwards from the user interface to the query, and then maybe I'll try going forward from the query to the user interface later. I look at this user interface and I say, well, okay, it's a description of the hunter. And then I look a little bit more closely and I say, well, what exactly does it have? It has the name hunter here, it has a little description of the hunter, and it has an image. Right? Does that make sense? Image of the hunter, name of the hunter, and description of the hunter. Very, very straightforward. And now I'm imagining, okay, well, I could use this to actually figure out what's in the database. I can say, well, database for a class has to have the name of the class, has to have a description of the class, and has to have a picture of the class. Otherwise, I couldn't create this user interface. I couldn't show you this, this um, presentation. So I'm going to assume, and I've already assumed because we've already seen this in a previous slide, that we have a class. It's an information type. It has a name. It has a description. It has an image. If that's the case, then what query could I use in order to get at the stuff in order to create this presentation? Well, here it is. Select from and where. Remember again, select tells me which columns from the table I want, from tells me what table I want, and where tells me under what conditions. Okay, so let's work this one backwards as well. Which one do I want? I want hunter. 
Now, I say where class name equals Hunter to keep it simple, but in reality, I would say where class ID equals class 123. But since that's not shown on the screen, I didn't want to show it in the query. But you get the idea, right? And later on, I'll be showing you some ones that are like that. So which one do I want? I want the Hunter one. That's where the where thing comes in. Where tells me which one I want. I want the one where the class name equals Hunter. What table am I talking about? I'm talking about the class table. The class information type from our bubble chart maps directly to the class table, at least in our very simplistic notion of how databases work. In reality, it's way more complicated, but don't worry about the complication. Get the simplicity at the moment. So there's a class table, and what exactly do I want? That's the from. I want the image, I want the class name, and I want the class description. Okay, get the idea? Now let me work it forward. I have this database. That database is, is set up the way that I showed you before, and I make a query. I say, give me the image, the class name, and the class description. That's what I need in order to build this display. Give me it from where? From the class table. Under what circumstances do I want? What, which ones do I want? Which records do I want? Which items do I want? Which rows in the class table do I want? I want all the rows, all the records, all the items where the class name equals Hunter. I issue that query, it gives me back those three pieces of information, and now I thread them into this presentation. And if you remember from before, the way I do that is I have a template over here that has all the display parameters. It says that Hunter's going to be this color and this big. I get the word Hunter from the database, but the formatting is all in the template, and that's what produces this presentation. Okay, got the idea? So we've sliced up a very simple piece of user interface. Let's progress on and do some more and more complicated ones. We focused on the class. Now let's focus on the class and the role. We're going to talk about the relationship between class and role. Notice, remember before, we said class can have one or more roles. That's why I've stacked these little disks under role here. The class has the inf same information we talked about before, pretty much. The image and the class ID and the class name and the class description, same as before. But now we're adding this relationship to the roles. And the role itself has an ID, the role has a name, and the role has a bunch of other stuff. Okay, so now I've gotten a little bit bigger, a little bit more complicated, because now there's two different information types, two different tables involved, right? And if you look at the value patterns, none of this should be at all um, hard to understand. It's the same stuff as we've been talking about before. I just included it in here to give you all of the details behind this example, which, by the way, are templates. They're, they're examples that you can use when you do your Wikipedia assignments. Okay, so... Now let me talk about the query and results that use that class and role table put together. So look at the presentation here. Again, this is from the help system, but it might as well have been from the user interface because I can use exactly the same database to build this help screen as I can use to build the actual application. And if, and if Blizzard's smart, that's exactly what they do. They don't have two places where the, um, where the roles and the classes are. They have one place, it's their database, and they pull stuff out of the database in order to create this presentation, as well as to create the presentations that you see in the, in the real user interface of World of Warcraft. Okay, so let's pull this apart again. Notice to make this presentation that, for one thing, this is all the classes. Can you see this is a variety, this is all the different classes. But in addition to class information, I also have some role information under here. So it says classes here, so that's assuming that I'm getting all the classes that I have, that I'm going to show every single class on here. Then I have the name of the class, right? That's the class name. I have some image associated with the class name, but right under the class name, I have the role name. And in fact, in some cases, it's more than one. So you see under the warrior role, under the warrior class, they could be a tank. And they can be a uh, melee, is that melee damage dealer? Hard for me to see, the print's kind of small here. Okay, so now I'm combining information from two different information types, which map to two different tables in a database. So what do I need? I need an image. I need the image from the, from the class. I need the class name. I need the class description. That's all the stuff we had before. But now I also need the role name. But another thing that's different about the presentation than before is that now I want all the classes, not just a single class. Let's go back and look at the query. Select means what columns do I want? I want the image column. That's going to give me the file to, to, to create this little image here. Class name, class description, and also role name. Role name coming from a different table. So I need to get information not only from the class table, but also from the role table. Now let me pause here to give a little nod to the people who know a little bit more about this language. Remember I called this the structured query language and that this is level one. There's all the way up to level 10 and beyond, the very simplest. And let me just say that 
there's a lot more to this from than meets the eye. I'm keeping it very simple and I'm stripping it down to the basics, but in real life, this from thing is a lot longer and it includes a lot more other junk in it, but I'm not going to worry about that junk at all. Okay, select these four things from the class and the roll table. And do I need a where here? I don't need a where at all because I want all of them. I, it doesn't matter what the conditions are. It doesn't matter what the names are. It doesn't matter anything. I want all of them. So I don't need a where clause. These things are called clauses. I don't need the where part. Just to select in the from part because I want all the classes. Okay, that's a new piece of information. If I want all of them, I don't have to specify any where stuff. Okay, and when I get these back, I'm going to get it back a bunch of them. In the first case, where I just wanted the presentation of one class, I'm only going to get back one class. In this case, I'm going to get back a whole bunch of them. And I'm going to have to go through them one at a time, laying them out on the screen like this. And I'm going to have to have some fancy code that says, how do I go from a list of classes and roles to this particular presentation because this is kind of a complicated presentation. I want a two column presentation and you know maybe I'm going to alphabetize them. I'm not exactly sure how they're ordered here. Whatever. Okay, you get the idea? So first we did classes alone. Now we did classes in combination from roles. When we did classes alone, we only selected a single class. We needed a where clause in order to make that happen. In this case, we want all the classes. We don't need that where anymore, but on the other hand, um, it's going to be a lot more complicated in order to um, lay this all out. Onward. We're going to get a little bit more sophisticated still here. We're going to get more and more sophisticated as we go through the different, um, the different iterations here. I'm starting to start from simple, go on to complex. Now we have classes and features. So class again has pretty much the same stuff that we talked about before. And now we're going to add features. And again, don't worry so much about what a feature is. You'll see it in context here in a second, but don't worry so much about it. Um, a feature has an ID, like everything has an ID. It has a name, it has an image, and it has a description. Okay, so we're still in pretty simple attributes. All the, you notice these attributes kind of repeat. We got IDs, we got names, we got descriptions, we got images, and lots of things have those. So they're shared attributes across various different information types. And again, we have the table, and nothing in this table of value patterns should really be surprising to you. What's really now uh, interesting is to go on and look at the, um, uh, to look at the presentation. Okay, so now we're doing something a little bit different than we did before. Remember, in the first case, we got a single character. In the second case, we got a single class. In the second case, we got um, uh, all of the classes. Now what we're going to do is get um, all of the features for a single class. So here's all the features for one class. One class, multiple features. Okay, we don't, we're not getting all the features for all the classes. We're not getting all the classes. We're getting one class, multiple features. How are we going to do that? So let's look at this presentation because this is what we're aiming for. The first thing we want to do is put in the word hunter here. So that's the class name. The word features is going to be the same no matter what, right? You can switch out warrior in here and it would be the same word. Warrior features, hunter features. Hunter is what changes features, doesn't change. And then we have a feature image. So we have the class name up here. We have a feature image there. We have a feature name there, and we have a feature description there. But notice it's for all of the features for a particular class. Okay, so what's the query we're going to use to get that out? Well, we need to select the various columns that we're looking for, class name, feature image, feature name, and feature description. Only one thing from the class do we need, and that's the name, right? Because there's nothing else but the name of the class on here. But we need a bunch of stuff from the feature. And we're going to get it from the class and the feature table. That should be pretty clear, right? We need to engage the class table and the feature table. But now, where what? Where class name equals hunter. So we only want the one class, the hunter class, but that's going to give us all the features. Give me all the features that are related to the hunter class. And I'm bypassing a little bit of the detail here, but I think you should be able to get this conceptually really well. All the features that are related to hunter are going to be there because I have this relationship between hunter and feature. Uh, between class and feature. So when I say where class name equals hunter, it's only going to give me the features that are related to the hunter class, and it's also going to give me the name of the hunter class. Moving right along, we're now going to zoom in on characters, and we're going to talk a lot about the characters. And what I wanted to do was just give you all of this character interface stuff all in the same place, and to make one big point here. And that point is that character itself has its own attributes, but the character, this is the character that you create now, 
has its own attributes, but it also has some attributes that it inherits from the class that it belongs to. And the class has attributes that it inherits from, say, the abilities that it belongs to, or the role that it belongs to, or the rest. And so we now have an additional concept in here. In addition to, um, class, or in, in addition to information types having attributes, we have information types that sort of inherit attributes from the things that they're related to. Okay? This is the most complicated we're going to get. And this can get really complicated really fast, so I'll try to keep it as simple as possible. Now, look at the different things that a character has, and it would be a very good exercise for you to go through this interface and tell me which of these things are attributes directly of the character, and which of these are things that are related to what the character, um, or what the character is related to. So, I'll give you an example of this. We, da we have down here um, the gender, the sex, male or female, of the character. That's related directly to the character. There's no there's no gender or sex um, information type that the character is related to. It's a quality of the character itself. On the other hand, we have up here the races, and we know the characters are related. Our characters are related to classes. Classes are related to races. And so any of the race stuff up here is not part of the character itself. It's part of the race. And once I assign my character to a race, then I will inherit all of these things that the race has. Okay, so. That's, the, that's characters um, uh, from a distance. Now let's get into characters up close. Okay, can you notice that the sun is going down? Here it is only 4.47 in the afternoon and I'm already worried about it getting to be too dark to talk to you guys. Okay, so let's, talk, let's start with the character's own attributes. And in this diagram I've grouped them into three big categories because there's just too many of them to have them loosely scattered about. The character has appearance attributes, it has status attributes, and it has administrative attributes. We're really going to focus in mostly on the, um, on the appearance attributes. But one, <clears throat> one that I want to focus in on because we'll talk, or a couple that I want to focus in on, actually I'll talk about status as well. <laughs> Scratch that last comment. So here's all the appearance, here's all the appearance uh, attributes. And, um, uh, and here are a few of the value patterns from some of the key attributes that are scattered around here. So notice that a, a, a character has a hairstyle, a hair color, facial hair, face, gender, skin color. The character has a name itself. And then the status of the character is stuff like, where is that character? Where on the map is the character? What's its current health? So that's how much, you know, how much damage it can take is the inverse of health. More, the more health I am, the more damage that I'm capable of taking. What's my current level? Um, I haven't talked about level much, but you probably understand this idea that in Warcraft you start at level 1 and you're heading for whatever it is these days, level 80 or something like that, and you head through these levels by doing these quests, etc. So that's an attribute of the character. The character has a level. The class doesn't have a level, right? The class is, does not have a level because a level is something that applies to the character, not to the entire class. If you gave a level to the entire class, then every character in that entire class would have the same level, not what we want at all. Okay, and then the character has administrative stuff like who created it, what, 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 when was it created, when did the person last access it, etc., etc. Okay, so here's a view of the character's attributes. Now let's look at how those character attributes are used. So nothing, new, nothing too new here in the, um, in the query. We're just getting out for whatever character, and now notice I've gone from a character name to a character ID. So this is tr more truly how we would do this kind of thing. We would cite the character's ID, not the character's name. But for character 185732, that's the where clause, in the character table, that's the from clause, give me the gender, the skin color, the hair color, the hairstyle, the face, and the facial hair. Give me all of the appearance characteristics. Okay, now, how do I go from all these appearance characteristics to an actual graphic of a character? Right? So. I have my hand-waving word in the middle here, and that's the word algorithm. There is some algorithm, there is some process they use, and this is part of their proprietary material. This is, took a programmer, I'm sure, a long, long time to figure out. How do I go from a skin color to a particular graphic to use for this particular character? How do I go from a facial hair thing to putting facial hair on this character? And it's not simply, as, it's not simply just take one picture and put it over another. It's a lot more complicated than that. There's a sophisticated algorithm, and that's really the new information here. Old information is the select and the from and the where stuff. We've been there before. 
But what's new here is that we then take that stuff and we're not just displaying it on the screen as a bunch of words. We're using it in a sophisticated algorithm to come up with a graphic, to come up with a visual. And it's not just a standard a static picture, right? It's an animated thing. It's some frame that has lots of textures on top of it. And there's a clue to how they do it, but I don't want to go into that at all. And now also we've switched from looking at the help system, which is just about text and descriptions, to looking at the actual user interface. The actual user interface is created by drawing all the appearance attributes out of the database, applying an algorithm to them that figures out how to make that character look based on data that's in the database. So facial hair might say beard, right? Literally in the database it says beard, but what happens in the application is a little bit of scraggle over here, maybe something big coming down over here, you know, whatever it is they, they want to make this character um, look really interesting. Okay, you got the idea? New information here is that I don't just get the information out of the database and splash it on the screen into a template. I go through a sophisticated algorithm to figure out what to do on the screen. And we're going to see some more examples of that as we go forward. This last example is really the deepest we're going to go in terms of um, getting into the guts of how something like War War Warcraft works. Because after here, after this, it starts to get very, very technical very quickly, and I don't need you to go there. But I do want you to take this last step. And so now we're going to look at the character, the class, and the ability. Notice three different tables. So my character has current information. It's got a current um, status. For example, my, my character has something called focus. Don't worry so much about what focus actually is. It's, um, it's basically your ability, mm, let's call it loosely for the purpose here, it's the amount of juice you have in order to use a particular ability, right? My focus is the juice I need in order to do camouflage. And if I don't have a lot of focus, I can't do That's the idea of focus. Okay, so my character has a current amount of focus. Changes all the time. The current amount of focus is not an attribute of the class. The class doesn't have a current amount of focus. The ability doesn't have a current amount of focus. The character has a current amount of focus. Me, my character, has some amount of focus. And it's not an attribute of any of these other um, of any of these other information types or tables. It's an attribute of my character. Okay, so my character has a current amount of focus. It happens to be a hundred. My character has a name. My character has a level. Okay, got the idea. Now my character is a member of a class. The class has a maximum amount of focus. Every character of that class can all, maxes out at a hundred focus. So at the moment, I'm maxed out. I can't get any more focus. I'm at the top of the, the gauge. But if I, as the game designer, go in and say, you know what, I want to give my characters more focus, I'll change the maximum to 200. Now I'll only be halfway there. Do you see when I change things for the class, I change them for every single player. That's the beauty of this. I can change things for every single player just by changing attributes of the class. And the current focus of my particular character isn't going to change. I do other things to change the focus of my character. Like, for example, I might rest for a while and my focus will go, will go back up. Okay? So, the level is, a, is an attribute of the character as well. The, as I said before, the class doesn't have a level. My particular character has a level. So, I have attributes at my level. I also have, and, and, I'm, in, and I'm inheriting. My character has a maximum focus of 100 because my class has a maximum focus of 100 and I'm inheriting that focus, that maximum focus from my, um, from my character, uh, excuse me, from my class. Okay, so I have a current focus and I have a max focus. My character has a current focus and a max focus, but only the current focus is owned by the character and the max focus is owned by the class the character is a part of. Okay, now we're gonna go even one level further. The class has an ability. That ability is called camouflage that camouflage has a cost of 20 focus. Okay, don't even worry so well, I'll explain briefly what this means. When I use camouflage, it's gonna cost me 20 focus. So if I use camouflage and I'm at 100 right now, I'm gonna, it's gonna cost me 20, so I'm gonna go down to 80 focus. I can't use camouflage six times without regenerating some of my focus, right? Because six times 20 would be 120. My maximum focus is 100. I can only use it five times without doing something to regenerate my focus. Okay, you got the idea from sort of an end user perspective, but I don't care about the end user perspective so much. I care about the database and the user interface perspective. The database perspective is that the cost is, um, is owned by the ability. This ability defines the cost. The class doesn't define the cost. If the class defined the cost, it would be the same cost for every ability. 
Every ability has its own cost. So that cost has to be owned by the ability. Okay, I'm hoping that you're beginning to have just an inkling of how cool and how sophisticated information modeling is because this is where the game actually lives. The game does not live in that UI that you play and press buttons and move things around. The game lives in this structure and figuring out the rules of the game have everything to do with figuring out the rules of this structure. So that's why this is interesting. That's why this is cool. That's why you should all go into this and figure this stuff out and play in here for the rest of your lives because it's a really cool thing to do. Okay, so I'm developing my game by developing this data structure, by developing this information model behind the game. Ability owns the cost, the class owns the maximum focus, and the character owns the current focus. However, the character is going to have a cost. Every time my character uses camouflage, it's going to cost me 20. So it's owned by ability, but it's inherited by the character. The character gets to, has to abide by the rules that are defined inside the ability. And this, uh, this, this idea of having things defined over here and owned somewhere else is really critical. It's really essential to making the whole system hold together. Okay, so here is our, um, here's our class and ability relationship. We have the character, uh, is related to the class, the class is related to the ability, and all this stuff kind of vests down on the character. It all kind of, in the end, is used by the character in order to play. Okay. To finish this final example, let's look at the user interface behind this idea of characters and classes and abilities. So I have a little piece of user interface here, and this is kind of my, um, this is my health gauge. Right? For every character, I don't know if you, you know, if you know World of Warcraft, I know this sounds really simplistic. If you don't know World of Warcraft, I should make it simplistic. And what this is basically is your health o meter It has your current level, and the current level of this character happens to be two. He's a paltry character. He happens to be my character, thank you very much, that I created and ran for about 15 minutes in order to get him from level one to level two. He has a picture. This is the picture. This is the image of the character. Right? So now remember, uh, well, uh, this is actually the image of the class. So I think this is the image of the class. I don't think this is customized for my particular character. It might be. Um, then it's the name of the character that's owned by the character. Then I have this little thing called focus. Notice the focus. It's current focus slash maximum focus. The maximum focus is coming from the class table and the current focus is coming from the character table. But notice in this interface, it really shows you how this character has inherited this. When I look at this interface, I say, oh, my max focus, my character's max focus. I don't say the class's max focus. I say my character's max focus. I've inherited the maximum focus. Okay, so then we have, um, that's all I'm going to focus on here, ha, is the focus, the, the orange band. Let's not worry about the green band right now. That's something else. Okay, so in order to create this little piece of user interface, I need to know my character's level. And let's just say, for the sake of argument, that this is an image from the class, that it's not customized for my particular character. So I, I get uh, the, the, the level, I get the image from the class, I get the max focus from the class, and I get the current focus from, um, from uh, my character. And I render these things inside this fancy user interface. This is a gauge. When I'm at half, this gauge is going to be at half as well. So you get the idea, right, that there's a little algorithm here as well. The algorithm turns 100 out of 100 into a, a length to make the orange bar. So there's a little bit of an algorithm here as well. Now let's look at the second piece of user interface, which is even a little bit more sophisticated than the health o meter. And, the, and this, is your, um, uh, this is your action bar. And the action bar lets you know what you can do. Now remember I said before that I can't use my camouflage action. And this is not a camouflage action, but don't worry about that. I cannot use my camouflage action if my focus is under 20, right? Because the cost of the, f of the camouflage action is 20 focus. So if I'm at 19 focus, I can't use it. And using it means selecting it from this action bar. So I'm going to have two modes on this action bar. Gray means that I can't use the ability right now. And bright or lit up means I can use the ability. Do I make the thing gray or do I make, I make the thing bright? I make it gray if my current focus minus the cost that comes from the ability table is less than zero. In other words, my current focus is 19, the cost is, is 20. 19 minus 20 is negative one, that's less than zero. Therefore, I make this thing gray. And as soon as my health goes above 20, I'm gonna brighten it up again so that I can use it. 
Now there are other there are other things that determine whether you can use this ability or not, but I don't want to go there right now. I just want to stay relatively simple and say that I have two pieces of user interface here that depend on getting stuff back out of the database, getting stuff back out of those tables, those character ability and class tables, and then figuring out what to do on the screen depending on what I got out of the database. Okay, so we're going to conclude here by looking again at the um, uh, looking again at the query. Select tells me which columns I need. I need the level column, I need the image column, the name, the current focus, the max focus, and the cost column. Where are those things coming from? They're coming from the character table, the ability table, and the class table. And which ones do I want? I want the ones that have to do with the same character, my character, 185732. That's going to give me the abilities, that it's going to give me the current focus and the max focus, the level, the image, and the name just for my character and not for any other character based on its class and based on the abilities that that class has. Okay, so let me just take a moment to traverse back through where we came. In this lecture, I'm really tying up a lot of the technical details that we've been working on throughout the entire class. The idea of information modeling and putting together what are the different types and what are their attributes and what are their value patterns. The idea of algorithms and how I draw things uh, into the user interface and decide on how the user interface is going based on those algorithms. And the idea of information presentation where I have different templates and I thread information into those templates. All of that's coming together here. So this is a skill that I think is very worth you cult cultivating as you go forward and as you interact with all the information systems that you're going to interact with. When you look at an information system, whether it's a game or a website or even a book, you can be thinking, what are the types of information? How are they broken down into different attributes? How are they related to each other? And what would it take to get this page? What would it take to put this thing on the screen? And if you can master that skill, you'll have a you'll have something that'll hold you in good stead for the rest of your life as you deal with different information systems.